we spoke on this uh, over the weekend, and I just briefly touched on this. So Jesus goes and he gives them power over all things, but I love how he comes uh, in the beginning. He says, a prophet is not without honor in his own country because the people started questioning him. Is not this the guy that we know? Isn't this Rishi I had coffee with yesterday? Isn't this uh, Leon that played cricket with me last week? So people get familiar with us and they don't understand that the power of God is within us and it works through us. Sometimes we let people, (laughs) how can I say, uh, put us in a place where we don't even understand ourselves what has been given to us. He has given you authority over everything. You have been made a king and a priest. You have been given all authority and power. If you understand that you have been raised with Christ, it means you are seated with him in heavenly places. So whatever he is able to do, you are able to do. Whatever you heard him do, you are able to do. But sometimes you get into a place just like Jesus did. I mean, he didn't heal everybody. He just laid a hand on a few folk and then bolted for the next town because they did not receive him. The, the fact that people don't receive you doesn't change the level of power that God has given to you. And that's what stood out for me. So he says, um, whoever does not receive you and do not hear you, when you depart there, shake off the dust from under your feet. So this has been with me for a while. Dust. What is Dust. Dust is a dirty thing. It's all around us at this very moment. Because we move, there is a lot of, um, how can I say, movement in the air. If you open up a door and there's light shining through the window, you can see it in the air. It doesn't disturb you because you're so used to it. So you just walk through it. But stay out of the room for two weeks, and then you get back to your office. What's the first thing you notice? Where's the people that are supposed to clean my desk? <laughs> it's full of dust. Man, uh, I love it. I'm going to have uh, someone clean these chandeliers because I was putting up the lights last week and I realized there's a lot of dust on there. Because the places that you don't pay attention to, that's where the dust comes and settles. So it says, go out, take nothing with you because I am with you. I am the power and the authority that you go in. When you go minister, don't take anything with you, for the Spirit will tell you what to do. So, you don't need anything because you have all power, but then there are still places where you will not be received. Don't let those people doubt the power that is within you. Because I've seen too many people go out and they got rejected the first time, and they somehow leave the gift completely. It's like, I tried, but it's not working for me. But that's not where you stop. That's where you carry on. You carry on because it is not you that heals the people. It is the power that worketh through you. So dust. Oh. These are people. Oh. Dust is people who don't understand spiritual truth. Wow, it's the first time I did like this whole thing. But let's get back to what dust is actually. And we're going to go back to Genesis 2. It starts off, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested. Hallelujah. On the seventh day from all his work which he made, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. Who? Generations of the heavens and of the earth. I don't know why I made earth capital letters, but anyway, it should be other ways around. These are the generations of heaven and earth. Pay attention. There is two. There is a generation of heaven. And there is generation of earth. All right, there's generation of earth and there's generation of heaven. 
So there are two different tribes he's talking about here. Uh, where were we? Verse 5. 4. In the day that the Lord God made earth and heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man. Wow, all right. So man was formed on that time out of what? Dust. Dust. Hallelujah. And what happened next? God breathed. Yeah, God breathed into his nostrils. The breath of life. So, first of all, he was a man made out of dust. Then something happened after that. So first he was created in dust. Then God breathed the breath of life into him, and then man became... (coughs) But he is still made from dust. Let's go to Genesis 13. And Abraham went out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. I'm just going to read you this whole story because it paints the picture. In verse 2, Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent has been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents, and the Lord was not able to bear them, that they may dwell together, for their substance was great, so they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. Why? Because dust will always bring strife. Hmm. Sure. <sighs> so it was too many cattle, too little gross. <laughs> uh, it's thrive. Let us split. Verse 9. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself, I pray thee, from me. If you will take the land from the left, then I will go to the right. Or if you depart to the right, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plains of Jordan, that, um, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as you come unto Zor. Now verse 11, then Lot chose him all the plains of Jordan, ha, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Ha, it's beautiful. So, Lot and Abraham had a quarrel. Abraham says, man, I don't want to quarrel with you. Choose you a land. And I, I won't even choose. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Because Abraham is seeking peace. Lot is just seeking the best. So Lot says, I want this land where the water is. Abram says, take it. He goes his other way. God says to him, now, the place where you stand, look all around you. Because everything I'm going to give you, that includes, which he has already given away. (sighs) Okay. So verse 15, it says, For all the land which you see, to thee I will give it, and to your seed forever. Ha. So there is a seed that will be forever. Now, there is two generations of earth and generations of heaven. There is two different seeds. There is two different men. There is two different mindsets. There is two different trees. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, you're going to start seeing this now. Okay, verse 16. This is the first time God says this to him. It says, I will make your seed as the dust of the earth, so that no man can number the dust of the earth. Then shall your seed also be numbered. So God says to him first, I will make your seed. Oh, let's put 
first of all. Let's put it in two ways, God and man. So, first of all, God promises Abraham. He says, I'll make your seed like the dust of the earth, which cannot be numbered. And yet I will bless you. Arise and walk through the land in the length of God and the breadth of it, for I will give it unto you. And Abraham removed his tents and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and he built an altar unto the Lord. So God says, man, just look around you. Everything that you see, I'm going to give to you. And I'm going to make your seed like the dust. And people will not be able to number it. So, the beginning, God makes man out of the dust of the earth. So that's the first thing. He didn't do everything together. He didn't flick his fingers and then, poof, there stands man. No, he first made him. And then he brew his breath into him and he became a living soul. So he's still formed out of dust, but now he's a living soul. Now let's go to Genesis 15. It says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? Now God promised him <laughs> two chapters back that I will make your seed as the dust of the earth. Abraham's like, all right, so I'm going to be blessed because if I have generations coming after me, then it means whatever I do will continue. But he does not have a child. He says, I go childless, and steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to me you have given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be your heir, but he that shall come forth out of your own bowels shall be your heir. Ha, all right. Now verse 5. And he brought him forth aboard and said, Look now unto the heavens, tell the st and tell the stars if you are able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall your seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted him for righteousness. Oh, all right. So man's seed will be like dust. But God's promise ah, will be like the stars. So, we have seed of the dust, and then we have seed of the stars. We have dust, which is earth, we have stars, which is heaven. We have dust, which is man, we have stars, which is God. So he says, go, the seed that will be from you, the promise that I'm going to give you, will be like the stars of the heaven. Every plan that you make yourself outside of the promise of God, will be like the dust of the earth. Everything that I will give you will be like the stars. Everything that you're going to do yourself will be like the dust. Because God already knew before Abraham did everything what is going to happen. He knew he was going to get Ishmael, and he knew he was going to get Isaac. So he said, first of all, Ishmael will be like the dust of the earth. You find them today. But that will be our view will be the stars. So man was created in dust, and he will remain dust until he gets the breath of life. Ha. Ha. Let's go to Galatians 3. It always starts so lovely. Oh, foolish Galatians, <laughs> who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified amongst you. What is dust? People who don't understand spiritual truth. So he says, This only would I learn of you. Receive you the spirit of the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it yet be in vain... He, therefore, that ministers to you the Spirit and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted him 
for righteousness. Where did Abraham believe God? When he said to him, your seed will be like the dust of the earth, or when he said to him, your seed will be like the stars of heaven? Because he believed God and he was counted him for righteousness. When God fulfilled the promise that he gave to him, not the one that he tried to fulfill himself. Sometimes we feel that we need to help God on, eh? Especially when things are not working. I'm just going back to the beginning. He says, he has given you all power. Power over all unclean things, all devils, all authority. He has given you power over these things. But then we get into a situation where it feels like we are powerless. And then we start helping God on. Quoting scriptures. (laughs) Trying to start the engine ourselves. And nothing's working. We're trying to make our own plans, but sometimes we just need to stand back and say, God, this is it. This is dust I'm working with. How? If they don't want to receive it, get up, walk away, and shake off the dust. Don't let this, their not understanding, sit on you. Don't let the fact that they don't understand God's truth sit on you. Okay, so Abraham believed God, and he was counted him for righteousness. Now ye therefore that which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed, so that they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law or under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. Ha! So man gets the law... And on this side is faith. So if we look at the story of Abraham, if I understand it, and this is how I'm going to bring it over, it's very simple. Abraham had a promise of God. He tried to make it himself. And he produced Ishmael. He produced dust. That will stay forever. But when God tells him, I'm going to give you a son out of your own loins, while Abraham says to God, God, the factory is closed. There's nothing coming out. <laughs> the conveyor belts are not working. It's not been oiled. The system is not working. The things does not work according to how I see it fit to work. In my natural ability, this is not able. In my understanding, this is not able. Because, I mean, just going back to the weekend, God does not want to be understood. He wants to be believed. So... Faith, when God gave Abraham the promise, Abraham knew it was impossible. So he had to have faith in order for God to deliver the promise. Now, after God gave Abraham the promise, it didn't happen instantly. It took a couple of years. He almost lost his wife in the meantime. (laughs) But still, God delivered on his promise. And we're not even going to the story where God requested the promise back from him. (laughs) That's a story for another day. But it says that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Now we're talking about Abraham having a child. But we can relate this in our lives. The seed, everything that we do in life comes from a seed. You don't stand up today and say, I'm going to start this business and it's going to be successful tomorrow. No. It starts off with an idea a seed. You plant the seed, it develops, it sprouts, it gets roots, and so you develop it until the day that you can pluck the harvest of the seed that you have planted. So everything in our lives works this way, and it works. You either do it in the way of God or in the way of man. You're either stuck in the generation of earth or you move over to the generation of heaven because there is dust and there is stars. We are either... We are all made from dust. 
We're not stardust. No, we're not stardust. <laughs> we are all started in dust form. You are not born saved and God says, ah, oh, my beautiful son. No, you are first born in dust. Then you have the power of adoption that brings you into sonship. You cannot be born into sonship. You can only be adopted into sonship. See, God is righteous. He doesn't prefer one over the other. He made everyone equal. He first made everyone out of the dust. Then he breathed his life. But there are some that love dust. There are people that love dust. You can see they never wash their hair. <laughs> no man is justified by his own doings. But the just shall live by faith. Faith is believing in God. Not trying to understand him, but knowing that what he said he will do. That he is not a man that he should lie. Yeah. Verse 12. And the law is not of faith. The man that does them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us. Ah, this is beautiful. From the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. My goodness. Oh, must I read that again? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, every man, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. Brethren, I speak after a manner of men, though it be a man's covenant, yet it be confirmed. No man disannulleth or taketh or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. And he said, Not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, which is Christ. Ah, this is beautiful. So out of the heavens there came a seed. Out of the earth there came a seed. We have Christ, and we have the world. We have the stars, and we have dust. Now, this is beautiful because it says, um, whew, Christ has redeemed us of the curse of the law because of what he has done. So it's no longer what we do in order to get. It is what he has done so that we can receive. Believe and receive. Do and get. Ah, these things are coming together nicely. Now to Abraham and his seeds were the promises made. And he said, not to seeds as many, but as of one, and to your seeds. So we are not of two seeds. Even though we were formed in dust, all of us know what dust is. But we were not made out of that seed. Because now Christ has redeemed us from the law. He has redeemed us from that seed. And he has translated us into a different seed. Hmm. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which was 430 years after, cannot just know that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Amen. Wherefore, <laughs> then serveth the law. It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of the mediator. Oh, now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been made by the law. But the scriptures has concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer <laughs> under a schoolmaster. For you are all the children of God, by faith in Christ Jesus. So now we are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. 
So, Abraham, hallelujah. Thank you, Abraham, <laughs> for showing us this. But we are no longer children of Abraham. He says it here in verse 26. Now we are children of God. We are now children of God. By? By faith. Sure. Now, Abraham and, uh, sure, it's beautiful. You are now children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as been baptized into Christ has put on Christ. <laughs> there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Not to the promises, not to dust and stars, but you are heirs according to the promise, which is Christ. See, God gave Abraham two promises. First one, he says, your seed will be like the dust of the earth. The second one, he says, your seed will be like the stars of heaven. So first he gets Ishmael, and then he gets Isaac. First he gets, he does to get. The second one, he believes to get. So we have the group of people that believe they are Abraham's children, and yes, they are. They are of the dust, and it shows. Why? Because ha, huh, they strive. Man, this place is too small for us. Get your stuff and go to Jordan. <laughs> There's always strife. There's always contention with dust. Mm. Let's jump over to 1 Corinthians. Uh, verse 10, by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was given me. So, I am what I am by the grace of God. Come on, repeat after me. Say, I am, I am. what I am. I am. By the, by the grace. grace. Oh, you knew the last part. <laughs> You are not what you are by your doing. You are there because of your believing. You see, grace has been given to everyone. But some people try to earn grace. And then they fall back into the law. They produce Ishmael's. They produce dust. <laughs> but grace can only be received by believing. Therefore... Whether it be I or they, so we preach and so you believe. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say you amongst yourselves that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is also vain. <laughs> Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then Christ is not raised. And if Christ is not raised, your faith is in vain. You are yet in your sins. <laughs> then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead, and you became the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by man came death, by man also came resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Ah. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, after that they are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, when we shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power. Come on. Let's go back to Jesus. He goes to his disciples and says, I give you all power of all devils, all unclean things. So Jesus is the one that gives it. <laughs> Verse 25. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet, and the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, 
Then shall the Son also himself be subjected unto him that put all things under him, that God might be all in all. Hallelujah. 29. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand you in jeopardy every hour? And I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Hallelujah. If after the manner of men I have fought with the beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Amen. All right, so this is just, I don't know if Paul had a lucky wheel or something spinning, just throwing this in the middle of this whole thing, because the next thing he is going on to it's like, how, how does this fit into all of this? Because this is everything. Evil communication corrupts good manners. When Jesus gives them power and authority, he says, go out and preach the kingdom. He gives them power to go out and preach the kingdom. How do we preach the kingdom? By having conversations. We don't go out and preach, drill the Bible into them. We preach and we tell them what the Spirit tells. That's how we preach the kingdom. So it says, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. What is dust? People that do not understand the truth, and they will start communicating with you and commune with you. And when you start communing enough with someone, you either have the ability to change their communication or they have the ability to change yours. That's why it says, go out, shake off the dust. Let that be a testimony against them. Okay. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God, and I speak this to your shame. But some men will say, how are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? He says, you fool, <laughs> that which you sow is not quickened, except it dies. And that which you sow, you sow not that the body shall be, but bare grain it may chance of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as it please him. <laughs> and to every seed his own body. Come on. All flesh is the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another flesh of fish, another flesh of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Wow. Okay, let's just go back to, there are two generations of heavens and earth. There is dust and there is stars. They differ. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, and it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. <laughs> there is a natural seed, and there is a spiritual seed. There is a dust seed, and there is a, a starry seed. Mm. As it is written, yeah, here we get to it. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Ha, ah, so we get it. God made man from the dust, he breathed, and he made him a living soul. <laughs> the last man, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Ooh. So all of us have been made in this formula. But then we step into another seed. You can dwell on the earthly seed until the day you die if you do not accept that Christ has redeemed us from the seed yeah. into the seed. Step outside of the law. And it's not just the Jews that is in the law. There's a whole world, the worldly system. The guys walking after the devil, they are following the law. Because they continually have to do in order to get. Everything that they want in their life, they have to do in order to get. Yeah. Where the heavens 
or the starry sea works differently. It says, I have faith, I believe, therefore I receive. Yeah. Ah. How be it, that which was first, that which was not first, which is spurred, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, and the second man is of the Lord of the heavens. Ah, in Genesis, <laughs> God already made the generations of heavens and earth. It's always there. It will always be there. Hmm. But you are born, yeah. And then you believe into there. Uh, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they that are also heavenly. Uh, and as we have borne the image of the earthy, so also shall we bear the image of the heavenly. <laughs> now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Ah, so it needs to be put on. We put on Christ. Yeah. Now, this is beautiful because you only produce after your own kind. So when we put on Christ, that means everything we produce is out of Christ. When we don't put on Christ, everything we do is we produce out of dust. And then the scripture comes in, from dust you are made, from dust you shall return. You hear that at every funeral. Uh uh. <laughs> from dust you are made, but you are turning into stars. You are quickened into, a, you are made a quickening spirit. So, yes, you are made of dust. But that's not who you are called to be. God didn't purpose you to have a dustful life. Don't let dust cling you. So that is why Paul says, evil communication corrupts good manners. Because your communication will show you from what seed you are. And the seed that you sow is what you will reap in the end. You know, he says that you will be satisfied by the fruits of your lips that you will be accounted for every word that you speak. So Jesus says, you are clean by the words that I speak unto you. Yeah. So Jesus, over and over, he says, you are clean by the words that I speak unto you. Why? He communed with them. And what did I say? It's like, you don't have to believe me. Just pay attention to this. Go into someone else's negativity and start speaking to them. After a while, you will realize you will either become negative or that person will become positive. Yeah. There's, no, there's no neutral ground in between it. If, you, if you're going to decide to stick with someone, I'm not talking just about, hey, what's up? All right, you see, I'll walk away. Actually go into conversations with that person. See who has the greatest power. And then you'll see communications yeah. changes people. That's why it's so important, the words that you speak. Uh, and God tells them, he says, uh, the word of God is near you. It is in your heart and in your mouth to speak it. Yeah. Then he also says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. <laughs> he that uses it will eat the fruits thereof. Hallelujah. Sure. And he carries on. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So the important thing about this is understanding incorruption was what corruption was put on incorruption. Mortality was put on immortality. You must put on Christ. Imperfection must put on perfection. Not produce perfection. Because you first put on and then you produce. Because if you just try to produce, this is where you are. You are there. But if you put on, it is not you trying to produce. It just flows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So no longer will they say of our people, from dust you are made, and to dust you shall return. (laughs) And blow the guy into the sea. (laughs) No, that's not, that that is not our destination. Our destination is not returning to dust. If we return to dust, we've missed the point. Because we were made to ascend, not return. Ah, man, that's it. You were made to ascend, not return. Hallelujah, I hope this blessed you tonight. Are you blessed, John? Tonight you must ascend. (laughs) The ascended ones. Yeah, hallelujah.